Hey, good morning. This is episode two in a short series of videos on how to make coin rings from trash. Well, it doesn't have to be trash, just that mine are. I dig all mine up. If you've been a follower of mine now for some time, you'll realise that for the last three years I've been a metal detectorist, um, digging up loads of various artefacts, coins and relics and all sorts of things. Um, in particular, interest to me was the coins. Save them from the ground and then go and stick them in a drawer or a box to do nothing. So, down the road I thought, well it's winter, I don't like the winter very much, I suffer from the cold, what can I do? And I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll have a go at making a new wedding ring because mine broke ages ago. And uh, I had a go and I was quite pleased and I thought there must be a way I can get better at this. And then I thought, I've got an endless supply of coins in my drawer. Some of them are solid silver, dug up from hundreds of years ago. Now I probably wouldn't use those. They're hammered coins and they're quite special. But you know, the Victorian coins, which are 92.5% silver, they're 50% silvers, and other coins too, like this 1959 half crown, which really means nothing to anyone. It was just dug up, been left in the ground for a few decades, and then I found it. Now, I can turn this into something quite special. Now, video number one, if you have missed that, was actually about finding dead center in a hole in a coin and making the hole in the right place, almost within millimeter perfection. And it has to be um, as close as possible, otherwise you'll get an uneven ring. This one, it's about folding the coin. That first fold to get the initial shape to start putting it onto your ring mandrel or whatever you're going to be using. I'll be using a set of dies and punches and presses and that sort of thing. You don't have to spend that sort of money on the equipment that I've spent. Uh, I've decided to do that because for the last few weeks I've decided to take this very seriously and I'm amazed at the response. I mean amazed worldwide and thank you Harry Douglas for sending me so many silver coins including this beauty. Now you might not think there's anything special but it is sterling silver. There's the British hallmark on the back and it's a spoon with a little apostle on the top. Now I've already got a plan for this. I've been trying to reach Nugget Noggin because this one has got his name written all over it. Lovely silver ring I'm going to make for him. I'll do that in another video with the apostle on top of the ring and I need to get this to him. So I've sent him a message and I'm waiting to hear back. Meanwhile I'm now going to start the fold on this half crown and I'm going to show you how it's done. Right, the first thing we need is one of these which is called a dapping block. Different size holes. Um, I use these ones for a little sixpence and I'll use that one for the half crown and you can see that the half crown just fits in there quite nicely like that. Now we have metal on metal contact so we need to make sure that we lubricate the metal. I'll just do that with some petroleum jelly. You can use anything. A lot of people use coconut oil which is quite good. Also put a little bit on the coin and we need to get the coin the right way round in the press in the dapping block because I want this design to be on the band of the ring on the outside with that date 1959 because this is going to be sent to America to somebody over there who's asked me to make him a ring as a surprise for his wife and he wants 1959 um, so here we go with the first part of the fold that sits in there nicely and it's lubricated now to prevent any metal on metal damage we have to do the first press and for that I'm going to use a 20 millimeter ball bearing I do have other sizes as well, but that's the one I'm going to use. So let's do the first press. This machine is a six ton press. I know that sounds quite a lot, but sometimes I use this press to punch the holes, as you may have seen on the first video. So it needs to be a substantial press if you're pushing holes through Cooper nickel coins. So we now commence with the first part of the fold in the dapping block. The coin is level, the ball bearing is on the top. We'll keep our eye on it just in case the coin starts to slip. So you need an absolutely true vertical downward press on the middle of that coin. Until you just feel it touch the bottom of the block and then stop before you do any damage to the coin. 
nearly there. There we go. And that's the first part of the fold complete. Now I'll go and anneal that, then we'll do the second part of the fold. Right, that's been annealed again. Looking good that. Still too hot to handle, but uh, it's now at a stage where I can safely quench it. Good, next stage. Right, here we have a folding die. So we'll put the coin in there now. Make sure it's level all the way around, ready for the second fold. I'm going to put a little gap between those blocks. Just to make sure that the folding cone can go through without hitting the block. And that's the folding cone. Now I used a steel one with anything with cooper nickel because of the um, damage it might do to the cones. I've had that experience already where I've damaged one of the cones and it's beyond repair and this one's got some marks in it. These are only really used for silver or gold of course. Gold, that's not going to happen very often. So we'll just put that in the centre and make sure it's lined up absolutely dead centre and vertical. There's contact. Just going to check the alignment of the coin. That looks good. going nice and easy. That's why you do the annealing of the coin, just to make sure you soften the metal, otherwise you'll get a split. And it still could split, even at that stage. Let's have a check. Did it come out of the bottom? Yes, it did come out of the bottom, look, so that's why you have a gap between the two. And then we'll take the coin out, which should come out really nice and easy. And you can see that now it's got a really nice deep 17 degree angle fold on the walls. And that's where we go to stage 3, which is getting the final shape for the ring before preparation, polishing, filing. So there we go. That's folding of a coin, ready for a ring. Well, hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoy showing you how to do it. Now I'm a complete novice. I've only been doing this for a very, very short time. And I don't have to work with mint condition coins or uncirculated coins because most people, in fact, nearly, I can't think of anybody else who does what I do. I am turning the dug up stuff, the things that are already imperfect, damaged, chipped or knocked into something quite new where they can be loved again by somebody. So I've now taken something which meant absolutely nothing to anyone into something which will now mean something to someone and have a new purpose and a new lease of life and who knows maybe sometime in the future people will be digging up the things that I've made that would be cool so if you enjoyed the video please do like and share but if you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so and sometime soon I'm going to be showing you on a video how to turn this nice solid silver English spoon into an apostle finger ring and let's hope I can find a way to get in touch with Nolan Noggin. Because I like to get his size. If not, I'm going to have to guess. So I'll catch you later. Thanks for being with me. And he's a treasure collector. Oh, oh, oh. Metal detecting and digging lots of holes. Looking for anything that's old. New videos every week, so please subscribe. Catch you later.